You will start with a square piece of paper, a pencil, and a ruler. You're going to draw a checkerboard pattern. Make sure you're reading the inches side on your ruler, the side where the numbers are printed larger in size. Set your ruler up against one edge of the paper as if you're going to measure it. Then take your pencil and draw small lines across the edge of the paper one inch apart. Now turn your paper to another edge and repeat the same process. You will repeat this process with all four edges of the paper. Making op art requires precision, so this is why using a ruler is very important. Once you have drawn lines one inch apart along all four edges of the paper, you will now begin to connect them with straight lines. Match your ruler up against two lines that are across from each other. Then use the ruler as a straight edge to help you draw a straight line connecting them. Do this all the way across the paper. Now turn your paper and do the same thing with the rest of the lines and you'll see that you're making a checkerboard pattern. Again, using the ruler to draw the straight lines is super important because op art requires precision. When your checkerboard is complete, you will get three circle templates. Take the biggest one first, place it in the middle of your checkerboard and trace around it. Trace the medium-sized circle next, and then the small circle, and you'll end up with three concentric circles drawn on your checkerboard. Now it's time to turn this drawing into op art. Choose two colors that you think go well together. First, you'll color everything outside of the circles in a checkered pattern. I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm gonna start with my green marker. I like to use one color first and then go in with the second color. You can figure out which style of coloring is comfortable for you. But I'm gonna do all my green first and then I'm going to fill in with my orange after. So I'm coloring every other square green in this first row here. Now on this next row, some of the squares are touching the circle. So I'm only going to color the parts of the squares that are outside the circle for now because we are leaving the circle blank. You can pretend that the inside of the circle is lava and it's going to melt your crayon or marker if you touch it, if that helps. So I'm just kind of mentally going along each square and thinking, okay, this one's green, this one's going to be orange, this one's inside the circle, this one's partially outside the circle. So you really have to do some thinking as you're coloring your squares here. Also, color your very best. The better you color in your squares, the better that your optical illusion is going to work out.
Now I'm going to start using my orange. So I'm coloring all the blank squares outside of the circle orange, since I did all my green first. It's a little bit easier to do the orange now. Once again, I'm just coloring the little part of the square here that's outside the circle. All right, I have finished coloring everything outside of the circles in a checkered pattern. Now it's time to enter the circle. We are going to be coloring the circle ring by ring. So notice there's an outer ring and then an inner ring and then that last circle inside. So we're just gonna start on the outer ring here and the ring is magical because anytime a square touches this outer ring, it changes colors. So this orange square here is gonna be green inside of the ring. So that's why I told you not to touch the circle because things were gonna be a little different. So now this square is part orange, part green. Same with this one. Again, we're coloring in a checkerboard pattern. It's a little bit more complicated though because we're going ring by ring inside the circle. So there's going to be a lot of partial squares here. Now I want you guys to notice something super important that I came across. Take a look at that little teeny tiny sliver that's right inside the circle there. It's just a teeny little part of that orange square. So I need to color just that teeny, teeny, tiny part of the orange square green so that the square right next to it can be orange. So find those teeny, teeny, tiny little sections and make sure you color them right. Okay, now it's time for me to go inside the next ring and now the squares are going to change color again. So once again now, orange squares that were in the outer ring are gonna turn green in this slightly inner ring. I hope that some of you are starting to see the pattern now. As we keep going inside the circle, the squares are switching colors. At this point, you really have to think about where you're gonna use your colors. It's kind of like a game. There's gonna be more little itty bitty parts for you to fill in. So really keep your eyes open for those because any tiny mistake might throw off your whole pattern. Okay, here I go into the last ring of the circle and you guessed it, once again, the squares will change colors. This last part is always the easiest because by now you've probably got the pattern. And you can finish this pretty quickly. Here is my finished off art checkerboard.